Yo, where's Lenny at? Seven so supposed to record at seven. It's seven oh seven, and he's not here. Fine. One minute thirty seven seconds later. Yo, bro. You said we was going to do the interview. It's 7 11. December 15th. LPW. Fight for New York. I'm doing it. All day. Every day. We get in there. Lenny Earl Cash. Lately, I've been moving through the motion. Ocean. Feel like I'm drowning in the ocean. Sitting down, wanted to go over everything that you got coming up. You got Absolutely. a bunch of stuff that's Absolutely. going on with yes. you. So, want to start off with your wrestling. You got a match coming up. I wanted to go into how did you get started in wrestling in the first place? Because I know okay. a lot of people that know you know that you love wrestling, but was like, how? How does he do this? <laughs> At this age? Yeah. <laughs> so, um,. It was actually not, it's not as easy as a journey as it made it seem. Um, originally, I went to Houston in, um, right before the pandemic, 2019. And originally, I was going to go to uh, Reality Wrestling, which is a Booker T school oh, okay. down in Houston. So I wanted to go to Houston, become, you know, the, the New York champion in Houston. <laughs> but it didn't end up that way. I ended up getting really hurt. Um, I was like, I needed IVs and... Something on my back, I think it was something like, not that I got scoliosis, but something along the lines that something messed up on my back. Anyway, um, I came back. Um, it wasn't an easy journey because the school that I'm at now, um, HOG, H-O-G, House of Glory, it wasn't, that wasn't my first pick. I, I went to create a pro first. And um, I just, not to say that it was a bad school, it just, I think it was not the right type of fit for mm -hmm. me. So, um, and also it was far, it was just too far for me. So I found um, House of Glory and ever since then, it's just been, it's just been a home for me. And how long ago did you start, did you say? Um, well, I want to say a year of consistently training. Mm. Cause um, when I was in Creative Pro, I only did like a couple months. I want to say like four, four to six months. It wasn't nothing like now. Like now I, I understand <laughs> wrestling, like to, to some degree, I'm not going to say that. But yeah, it's been and, a, yeah. Um, my bad, I didn't mean to cut you off. Um, nah, it's just been a wonderful journey, man. Like, it's just, it's just something that I dreamt about since seven years old, you know, and I'm finally, you know, about to grasp it. You want to talk about, because I know before, when last time I saw you, you were telling me about some of, like, the cool experiences that you've had and some of the people that you have met along the way and how it's helped you, like, want to keep going because you can see that it's, it's right there. Um, the people that along the journey, oh man, oh man. Um, I met a world's strongest man of 2018, uh, my man Adonis Briggs, mm. somebody that I, it was actually the first day I met, um, in Hog. I was one of the first people I met there. And, um, we've been, we've been actually really vibing and actually made this connection. So hopefully down the line, we become actually a tag team, you know, that'd be, mm. that'd be pretty sick. That'd be fire. Yeah, tag team with me and him, world strongest man, the world best hustler right here, Lenny Earl Cash. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. How was it for you for one of your first match that you that you had? So um, originally, I mean, I can't say I have been in a match match mm -hmm. one on one per se. I've been in a, a couple rumbles. Okay. So in in the rumbles is just you know free for all. You know, every man for himself, and. I got so close um, in one particular event. I got to top three, and um, it was the closest I got to winning it. But this upcoming December 15th, I'm going to make sure that uh, I'm not top two. You know what I mean? I'm top one. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> this the 15th is a one-on-one. -on -one. It's, yes. it's not a rumble. No, this okay. is, no, is going to be another rumble. This is, this, I'm going to declare it now. I'm winning this rumble December 15th. Come and get your tickets, live and direct, you get a free t-shirt if you do, um, and make sure that you, you, know, you show up and show support because 
You do not want to miss the action that comes out in that show on um, December 15th. LPW, Fight for New York. With Rumbles, mm -hmm. do you know like what number that you're coming out or um, yeah, you kind of figure out? It's actually um, in the day of, I think we draw from a hat and then uh, from there we just, it just goes free for all. Mm -hmm. I always wonder, do like, do they know before, or is it like random the day of? I yeah, depend, depending on, on, on who's running it, but yeah, from what it's been, it's just been a random uh, selection. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's fire. With wrestling, yeah, right. Who would you say? Because I know it could be two different answers. Because some people have like a favorite, and then who they model their game after. So that's basically what, what, what my question would be. Who do you model, who do you think, unless you just want to say it yourself, <laughs> but, <laughs> but who do you model your, you nah, think that you I model mean, your style, style but, after, and who was your favorite when you were coming up? Um, coming up, my favorite has to be like, you know, Shawn Michaels, uh, a Scott Hall, um, The Rock. Did you see, not to cut you off, did yeah. you see um, Ric Flair just did a... The last a, match? No, he did an interview with, um, with Shannon Sharp. Yeah. And he said that he thinks Shawn Michaels is probably the greatest wrestler ever. He ain't wrong. And, and you know <laughs> what I'm saying? Me and Brick have, ex, you know, exquisite taste. So that's exactly what I'm saying. Like, Shawn Michaels, for what he did for the business and even in tag wrestling, you know what I mean? Like, he revolutionized a lot and... You know, if, if I can be at least an ounce of that, I mm. think I'm in good spirits. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you were saying, you were naming people, my bad. Oh, um, yeah, Shawn Michaels, Scott Hall. Um, Macho Man, Randy Savage. <laughs> That's a good one, too. Um, I love the oldies, man. Like, I still got my Nintendo 64. I still play it. Be playing No Mercy, w, uh, WCW, NWO Revenge. You know, it's wrestling for me is... It's a way of life, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I always loved it, and you know, I'm never, I'm never not gonna, not watch it, you know. Yeah. Uh, my favorite people wrestlers that, as of right now, um, I would have to say, man, like, uh, to watch and see Kenny Omega, really good. Um, I really love Roman Reigns, what he's doing. Um, a sleeper, my man, uh, Gunther. Very, very, yeah, a nice sleeper pick with, because he, he, I feel like he's going to be one of the best Intercontinental Champions of all time. Mm. I think so. He's like going right at that peak. Is he? Yeah. And then, did you see, because um, I just saw recently, some mm. of the people that just came back, and you saw Randy came back. Oh, see so, when Punk did the switch? Yeah, yeah. Uh, he came back a couple weeks ago. I want to talk about more like the journey of with wrestling, right? So for, you, you said you went to Houston, you took the classes, and you came back home. Mm -hmm. um, and you, you're part of, uh, you said Hog, right? H O G. Yeah. yeah. So what is like the the kind of like the steps of with that moving forward? Is it like do they? Cause I'm just kind of be asking just generally because I, I truthfully don't know. Mm -hmm. So like, how does it work from transitioning from there to being on more of a like a main stage, like an AEW or AEW or? Well, this is where I hone my craft. This is where you know. I'm sharpening my iron to where I'm TV ready. Mm. Um, up to this point, you're gonna see me on the Indies all throughout the Northeast, West Coast, Midwest. I'm gonna hit every single part of New York, I mean, New York, of America that I can. And uh, God willing, you know, that accepts me. Mm. Um, but the journey and where am I trying to go? Obviously, I'm trying to make it to WWE. You know, um, AEW. I'm not. I'm not opposed to it either. But my, I always watch WWE. You grow up on WWE. Come on, that's, this is when <laughs> you, yeah. When you say wrestling, you most people say WWE. You know, and that's not to to have a shot at AEW because they're the new guys. They're the new flavor of town. But mm -hmm. I'm just uh, you know old school guy who just who just loves WWE. Mm -hmm. Um, but what what. What exactly are you asking me? Are you asking me, do I go, am I answering your question here? Yeah, you, you did, because I was more or less asking, because you, you said you're honing your skills and stuff like that mm -hmm. to get your TV ready. So yeah, mm -hmm. you, you did answer it. Yeah. But do you also, with them, do you also like travel from st to state to state? Because I know you said that you're going to be to oh. see, but is that 
TV and like broadcast and stream that? Yes. In all the so states, or so we I have the luxury um, of being in Hog and Hog shows, and actually LPW shows um, as well are being streamed on Premier Network. So with that, I'm already having a platform, so that way I can show be shown in different avenues of like YouTube or actually a, a streaming service, say like a, a, what is it called? Like Fire Stick? Mm -hmm. you, can, you can download the Premiere app and actually see me there live. So okay, that's it's really easy and accessible. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that's fine. I, w I didn't, I was trying to figure out like how does that, with this traveling, because mm -hmm. th that's one of the most fire parts because when you hear a lot of stories from people, like when they're coming up, they're like, we were going from, we're, we didn't always stay in New York. We were in California. We mm -hmm. were somewhere in Texas. We were I mean, in Chicago somewhere. I, I'm going to have to be a Rolling Stone. I have to make my own tour, I guess, you know? Because Yonkers, New York kind of knows Lenny or Cash, but, mm -hmm. you know, Albuquerque, New Mexico has no idea of me. Or say a Los Angeles. I haven't even been to these places, you know? Mm -hmm. And I want to, you know, I definitely want to say, see, I want to know what am I around? What is America at this point, right? You know? Um... But I want to do it through the the uh, maneuver, through wrestling with it, you know, and yeah. see all the different flavors of what comes with it, you know, like mm -hmm. how how does Texas like wrestling? How does New York like wrestling? What does California think of wrestling? You know, like so all these different styles, even within the same spot of New of America, because you know down the line I want to go on the world tour. I want to go to Japan. I want to go to Mexico. Australia, you know what I mean? Anywhere that, that, that has a ring, I'm going to try to be in, you know? Yeah. For sure. So what is your, do you have your signature move figured out yet? Yes. <laughs> yes, I do. Yes. Um, you, want, you want me to, to show you a little bit of it? or, uh, or you, you can. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, uh, maybe not, maybe when we're on the, the, not on the couch, I mean, cause you're bringing back memories when I was a kid right now. But, ah, I just come through on this. But, um, nah, uh, it's a high angle uh, back suplex. Okay. It's, it's better that I show you rather than I tell you. Cause okay. you know, once okay. I put a person up in the air and I see their feet dangling, their eyes is at a high angle looking at that ceiling, then I just drop them right down. <laughs> They really can't do anything about it. It's just it's it's a real power, powerful, devastating maneuver. Oof. Mm -hmm. See, that's why you said that they they're not ready for you. On not that. at all. Not at all. We getting hot. <laughs> we starting. We starting it out. We're trying to be the rookie of the year at oh, least. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know. So, how, what is your like preparation like when getting ready for it? Um, my uh, my training regimen, or I guess like more or less like a mental kind of thing. A like, mental how do you thing. Get, okay. Get yourself into it. Um, as weird as it sounds, I play video games. I play, like, I like, I see what I want to do in the game and then try to mimic in real life, if that makes sense, you mm -hmm. know? But then add my certain type of flair to it, you know? Because I feel like everything now, like with technology, like you, you can make so many simulations of things, so... It's really easy to come up with, with, with new ideas when I'm already seeing, like, I guess, a simulation of it. Yeah, yeah. that makes sense. That definitely makes sense. Most people try to do that, especially, like, other sports. Yeah. Like you're trying to think of, like, oh. I saw a UFC fight, play UFC, and then he beat the guy that he was about to face. Like, the same like, in yeah, that way. You know what I'm saying? Or, like, kids now, they're crazy into video games. All they play is, like, 2K when you talk about basketball and stuff like that. Exactly. That's all, that's all they do. <laughs> they they trying to play. I ain't gonna front like they they trying to play two K like in real life, and these kids are crazy athletic. Like the new generation. Oh it's, my god, it's like, different, <laughs> different kind, different breed, different breed. It's different. Yeah. So wanna jump into like um, like music, but wanted to ask you before we move away from wrestling, uh, is there anything that you want to say about the match before you get let your opponents know what you. Where's the hard camera? This is it? This the hey. main camera, then that one's on you. December 15th, LPW, Fight for New York. LEC, Lenny Earl Cash, come and see the Rumble. You're not gonna wanna miss it. That's it. That's all I gotta tell them. Make sure you're there. Oh, by the way, if you buy a 
ticket directly from me, you get a free Lenny Earl Cash shirt. So come on, send them DMs. So music. Yes. You've been doing music for a really long time. Anybody knows you just knows that that's been your thing. That yeah. Was your thing first. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> so So this is this is this is a perfect time to talk about this because it was kind of left out of left field. You're like, wait, hold on. I thought you was Lenny Dope Man. What happened? Who's Lenny O'Cash? So it was just, I think it was just time, man. I think for me, I had a realization of do I love music or do I love the, the process of creating music? Mm. And that, once I understood that, it's just, I love the process of creation. That's more what I like to do. I just like to, I guess, I don't know, I always was a kid to play with Legos and things like that, just to like, you know, fix things or like just I was always touching something man for real like I was always I was that kid don't put me in the room because something get touched um but uh yeah for music for me I think it was just time for me to say let me put this on pause and let me go for this other dream because this this other dream with wrestling has a window I'm not saying that music doesn't but I mean I can always write a song I can't always be a wrestler yep you know what I mean? So that was that was the thought process of that. But I always, I always love music. I mean, I think that's one of a, a, a beautiful way to express yourself spiritually and um, poetically. Um, music is is a free form and art form. So um, I couldn't I couldn't lie to myself and say I'm a rapper, wrestler. Like no, mm -hmm. I'm just gonna. When you see the dope man shades on again. That's when I'm dope man again. But at this very moment, you're looking at Lenny Earl Cash. That's it. That's all I got to tell the people. What my question was going to be with you, um, like with walkouts and entrances and stuff like that, would you want to incorporate your music into that instead of you? Well, funny thing you say that. Um, Lenny Earl Cash is more than, I mean, it's just more than just me as a wrestler. Um, it has, it has meaning in the name. Uh, Lenny is actually my birth name given to me by my mom. So that's a personal take for y'all. Um, Earl, I don't know if you guys know this, but DMX, Earl Simmons, the mm -hmm. actual, that's the big Earl, all right? That's the actual Earl that, um, that had derivative of the name. So that's why I got Earl in my middle name and Cash is what we all do this for. Mm -hmm. You know, we are for dead presidents to represent us. That's so. Fine. That's the whole reason behind Lenny Cash. I'm a Yonkers boy, so I got to put Yonkers in there for Earl mm -hmm. and me and myself and who we all doing this for. Yeah, that makes sense. So you wouldn't want to... Oh, to me, make my own tracks? Yeah, yeah. Uh, probably down the line, may, maybe in another reinvention of myself, mm -hmm. you know, where both things go hand in hand. But at this moment, um, my theme song is um, a DMX song. And once my debut match happens, you guys tune in and see. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, Broke Boys. Yes. From the creation to now in the future. So, Broke Boys, not broke, just broken worldwide. Um, we've been going through a lot of trials and tribulations, I want to say. But um, I finally have it set and charged. Um, we're doing a relaunch a rebrand, a renew coming 2024. So just get tuned and get ready because we're about to flood the streets. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. Coming out of my mouth right now. Guaranteed. Lenny Cast stamped. Done. Which is lit. Because I'm finding <laughs> out at the same time as you guys are. <laughs> yeah. Lenny o yeah. So we want to go back and give a little bit more of a story about Broke Boys for people that don't know that's watching for the... Oh man, it's a collective of these funky, <laughs> these funky brothers, Ayagas, um, Sko, shout out Sko, um, happy belated right now, if you're watching this. Um, he, he, came, he came with the idea of, you know, we have to make something, we got to stand for something, and Not Broke, Just Broken is exactly that. We, we're, we're changing these generational curses, we're changing, you know, what it is to be quote unquote broke, you know, mm -hmm. because a person hears, oh, you're broke, da, 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 you broke boys, 
who wants to be that? But before you're rich, what are you? You're broke. Mm -hmm. So that's the reality of it, you know? And I think a lot of people can relate with, you know, coming from nothing and turning into something. So mm -hmm. be ready and God willing, everything that goes planned in 2024 comes into fruition. I feel like this is a lot of, this has been planned since the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So now I can finally flow and let this all out because now I, I did everything that I needed to do. You know, I'm a, I became a wrestler. I did um, all the work that needs to be done in quality of clothing. And so just get ready and, you know, embrace, embrace the broke boys of 2024. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's definitely already support there because you see the people that are still wearing the, the clothing from before. Yeah, pop up. You know, yo, so. at all, much love to anybody who's ever bought from broke boys. Um, I know it's been a little shaky as of sort, but we're gonna come back bigger and better, for real. Stay tuned. So, a question that I've been asking everybody, mm -hmm. especially with you as somebody that has multi, th multiple things going on for yourself, right? So, if money wasn't an issue, you didn't have to worry about it. You can wake up and do literally whatever you wanted mm -hmm. for a year, days, month at a time. You didn't have to worry about anything else. What would you put your 100% focus on? <sighs> My family, man. I'm sorry, but I, what the pandemic showed me was exactly that. Um, I know I'm still talking about the pandemic. Like, I, I mean, we're in 2023, and like, but I still, I still feel things from it, you know? But uh, my family, I think, would be the most precious thing because that's just time you just can't get back. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. And money being an issue for lenny year old cash, it don't make sense. <laughs> you know what I'm that, that just don't make sense. Come on, man. See, it's not even that it's an issue. <laughs> because, like, even if I wanted to ask that same question to Jay-Z, yeah, like, it's not I know, an I issue know. for him. No, nah, I know, like... I know, I know. But I'm just letting y'all know, you know? Just letting y'all know. <laughs> uh, but, um... Yeah, it's just, it's just exactly that. I think family is, I think a lot of people lost that. A lot of people lost what, he, what exactly is morals again, you know, and family mm -hmm. values. Like, you know, these last couple um, holidays, you know, hasn't been the same mm -mm. since the pandemic. I think anything from the pandemic to now has not hit the same. It's not. It's, it's definitely not. different. I was like, telling people that a lot. I was like, with Thanksgiving. Energy. Thanksgiving is, was coming yeah. up and everybody was talking about it. And I was like, for me, like, Thanksgiving doesn't even feel the same for real. Black so, like, Friday lost a special luster. Like, people, everything. Christmas. People on online was going crazy over Yeah, Black you Friday. remember? Like, it was a time. Like, I wanted a new TV every year. Why? I don't know, but I needed it. <laughs> I saw something online like that. They was like, why you guys want a TV every year? What happened to the one you got last year? <laughs> <laughs> it's old. I need a new one. Yeah. The one that's more up to date. Yeah. No, I, I like asking people that question um, because it's good to see where people are at, like, mentally with that. So I, I, I like that, like your answer. Mm -hmm. Like, Rondon said cooking. He said that if he could, he would feed a whole village. No, that's could. a good, yeah. That's a good one. Um, Shout out Fight Back. Mm -hmm. Fight Back in the building. Um, St. Nick. Uh, thief. My phone, not Thief Honda. My bad, my bad. Schmuddy. Um, <laughs> who else I'm missing? Oh, man, Jesus. Uh, Flam the game. Um, talk to me, talk to me. Rondon. Scoop. Scoop. Come on. <laughs> Hello. We here. Everybody from Fight Back, shouts out. For sure. I think Ash said, um, like, giving back mm -hmm. to, like, um, kids that are... An adoption system and stuff like that. Oh yeah, foster care is crazy. Foster care, foster care is um, crazy. I think Prada says music. So everybody says something a little bit different. So mm -hmm. it's good to hear where everybody else is at. I like that. Yeah, no, nah, I mean, it's it's beautiful because I think what really we have to understand is everyone has a, a perspective. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like everyone has a story. I love just being on the train sometimes and looking like, what is this guy's story? What's mm -hmm. this person's story? Like, cause you know, people give that expression just by just walking out out their crib, you know? You don't know what they're going through, but you can tell on their face or what they're wearing, like, what they're feeling like, you mm -hmm. know? So that's a big thing that I catch up on. Yeah, definitely, for sure. Is there anything else that you needed to say or anything else that you wanted to talk about that you um, with having the space of being able to talk about whatever you want to talk about? 
anything that's going on in the world. Because we are, we are we gonna get political? I'm not I'm not saying I'm opposed to it, but I'm saying like me personally, <laughs> don't wanna even get we can go forever on this, bro. I, <laughs> you definitely I, can. I be talking to my girl about this all the time, like because you think about people that's losing their jobs because of what they're saying about it. Like I don't that's know if you guys saw the girl yeah. from Scream. I mean the the situation in itself is fucked. But like People are losing their jobs and scared to speak up, even though they didn't choose a side. They're just saying like, yeah, this is I not, mean, this not the, the right I think, thing. I think what we should really speak on is censorship. Mm. I feel like a we're one. becoming a society that isn't allowed to say what we want to say anymore. Mm -hmm. And that's scary as hell. Because growing up, even in wrestling, wrestling mm. is becoming this like, like, Okay, to be politically correct, fine. Be politically correct, but at the same time, it's like, why a human can't make mistakes? Why can't I? Like, sometimes, like, the stupidest things are gonna make what, what, what makes you go over, so I don't know. Yeah, no, that's, that's, a, that's a thing, because it's like, especially with the whole, like, new thing of, like, cancel culture. Yes, that's, right? that's what we're getting at. It's more or less like, it's almost like people can't make mistakes. Yeah. It's like what... Everyone's under a microscope. Yeah. It's like the whole point of people is to learn from the, the things that you did or didn't do or going to do in the future. And you might do something that you probably shouldn't have done. And it's like, all right, I can't go back and change it. That doesn't mean that everything about me should now Exactly. Be Gravitate gone. towards that, too. Yeah. You know, I feel like a lot of people underline the ugliest things a person said or done, mm -hmm. not realizing that, you know... That could have rehabilitated them to become better. A better person. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's just, I don't know. I think like too too many people are just have too many opinions. That's another thing too. Like everyone can just say what they want to say, and it means something. Not to say that your voice doesn't matter, but bro, like you're <laughs> preaching to the choir at this point. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody has access to. Instagram and TikTok and Twitter, so they can say whatever they yeah, want it's at just, literally any time. Of yeah, the day. I mean, listen. If you if you feel that strongly, step outside the keyboard. If you feel that strongly, do the action, not just send. Just don't send it. Don't just click the like. Come up, show up. Mm. Attend hut. Like you know what I mean? <laughs> like I'm tired of this. Like I'm tired of people just hiding behind, you know. Uh, a fake persona that they made online and, and trying to critique when, in all actuality, a lot of people's messed up in this game. Mm. A lot of people messed up in the game. A lot of people, like, they don't even realize that, you know, they're trying to play catch up with another person's life. In reality, you just, you're losing your own rat race, mm. you know? Student loans racking up, you're putting yourself more in debt, you're trying to, you know, look apart. For what? Mm. When you're not even happy with yourself. Love yourself. Yo, shout out my man Fly G's first love yourself. Shout out Fly, man. For sure. Dana's home. That's another thing I got to say. Bandana's home. We got to talk about that in music. I think that's the biggest thing that had me, I guess, messed up by this. Because me and Bandana, BC Dana, by the way, at BC Dana, if y'all want to follow him. He, um... That was my, that was my guy. Like, he's still my guy. Um, but he was the person that I would go night in and night out to open mics to, you know, these industry, you know, kind of events. And we, we really tried to, quote unquote, you know, thug it out and, and make it. And, you know, he was lot incarcerated for a little bit and now he's mm -hmm. back. So that's another reason why I feel like Music isn't dead for me because I have somebody from my past that just came back into my life that's, you know, that driving force of that. So mm -hmm. that's another big, another big key. And somebody that really loves music, so. Yeah, that dude, he walks around like singing and <laughs> rapping like all day. Like, if you don't know who BC Dan is, go to somewhere in Yonks and you see some guy in headphones like this and you're going to know who he is for sure, for sure. So I have, so I'll reach out. Mm -hmm. So I have something um, from Rick and he was telling me to ask you. No problem. So 
Um, he was telling me to ask about, so you can indulge, like, go in on it. The Culver Kings. Okay. And y'all childhood coach. Wow. Um, well, Culver Kings, um, a very, very big staple in basketball of Yonkers because that was one of, like, that's where I learned ball. That's where I learned basketball. That's where I fell in love with the game. Um, he, well, our childhood coach, Coach Lou, he was, he was everything to, to the community, um, just a driving force of, of what it was to be a man, to like, you know, he, he, would, he was such a, a generous guy. He would give us shirts before he paid his light bill. He told us, yo, I ain't got lights, but y'all got shirts. That, I'll never forget a person like that. Mm -hmm. um, when I won my first championship, he came directly to my house, showed my mom that I was a winner, and I can't, I'm getting emotional even thinking about it, but um, I'll never forget a guy like that because we need more people like that in the neighborhood. We need mm -hmm. more Coach Luz. We need more um, people like, like Nip. Like, we need more Nips in the hood. We don't have enough. We need to be more like that, and we need to actually sit down and look at each other and be like, are we together or are we standing in front of each other? You know, I think that's the biggest thing we need to do. But um, Culver Kings is uh, a basketball park right off the side of River, Riverdale. Mm -hmm. um, it's it, it's going to be renewed, by the way. Uh, shout out Mayor Spano doing the initiative of getting the courts back together. Okay. Um, there was some that they redoed uh, up in the north side. But, um, yeah, Co COVID Kings, we need to bring back the tournament. It needs to be done. Coach Lou needs to, to have something that, you know, his legacy has been passed on through. And I think COVID Kings was that mm. for the community and just for who exactly we need to be mm. as men. That's right. I feel that. Cause it's good to have those people, cause then it it molds you to who you are, to what you can do. He showed me teamwork. He showed me, you know, uh, dedication, integrity. Mm -hmm. He showed me discipline. You know, without those kind of moments, I wouldn't be who I am today. You know, what I mean, I really wouldn't. And just falling in love with the game of basketball is just so therapeutic. Mm -hmm. You know, just that that was another thing. So, yeah. For sure. How's it going? Shout out to Rick. Shout out Rick. <laughs> Shout out Rick. <laughs> he should have been there this summer, but that's another story. It's a busy man. Yeah. <laughs> busy, busy that's man. That's a busy man. <laughs> Facts. Um, any like last final things that you want to say? You want to reiterate the... The whole synapses? For, no. About your, your match on the 15th. Oh, yeah. Um, December 15th, live and direct at the NYC Arena of Amazura Nightclub in Queens, New York, Jamaica. We becoming Yonkers that night, all right? December 15th, 8 p.m. If you buy a ticket directly from me, you're getting the tea. Look how that sounds. It just rings, you know what I mean? It just sounds good. <laughs> Buy it from me, you get a tea. <laughs> Tea's coming out soon. I'm gonna show y'all soon, but um, no doubt, y'all just talks. Yep. It's been a pleasure, man, for cool. real. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. no doubt. Peace. Until next time. <laughs>